A wise man, truly one of the best and most intelligent of us, once said, What is polish? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No more. And it's a very profound statement. You see, with Destruction Darius 2, you're seeing a side of game design that, unless you do it yourself, or bought Rome 2 Total War on release day, you wouldn't normally see. I'm talking about an incomplete mess. The rules are different in this stage of development, and so they should be. I'll cut to the chase. I'm talking about polish. There shouldn't be any. Not only does it not help you early on, but it gets in the way. You don't try to paint a wall before it's built. You wouldn't sprinkle jungles and monkeys onto a still molten and forming version of planet Earth. Or would you? It's a sign of an inexperienced, overly enthusiastic or impatient game developer if they add pointless stuff like explody menus and rippling water to their games before the gameplay is finalised. So it's a little upsetting that most of the comments on my last few videos were about how bad the graphics looked, or how unpolished the game was. Don't get me wrong, it's great that you care, it really is. I feel so fortunate to have viewers who do. But let's have a look at the bits of polish I added too early and see what happened to me. Let's just say that adding this stuff too early hurt me, but no more. Yes, I added an explodey menu. It was like a proof of concept to get me into the mood for making this game. But adding and changing those options in this state was a pain. When developing a game, the menu is just an extra click or two clicks that you have to get through every time you playtest it. You don't want intros and animations, you just want bold buttons that get you to where you want to be. So I've substituted that flashy menu with this for now, and it works a lot better. Once I know exactly what is needed for the final menu, I can work on designing a system that looks and feels good. The time spent here before then is simply wasted. I added debris to the game as well, but this complicated matters because when the game slowed down I didn't know if it was because of these effects or if something invisible behind the scenes was doing it, so I had to remove these as well. In short, any polish this game had was stripped while I focused on the gameplay. The good news is that I feel the core gameplay is now up to an acceptable stage, and now I can start adding graphical effects and polish again. That playtesting session I talked about last time was the turning point. Suddenly, all of the game's elements came together into something playable and enjoyable. It's a lovely feeling, as a game developer, to see it become more than just the sum of its parts. It unlocks the higher echelons of gameplay. I know this sounds pretentious, but please, bear with me. You have control over the player's movement, the explosions, even the level design, but you can never prepare for how it'll feel like to play. All the perks and exploits that make it what it really is, rather than just a blurb on the back of a case. All these elements combined make up the game's atmosphere, and gameplay I guess. So now I've started the polishing. I'd like to add that the graphics are still placeholders, not final things, but the effects and sounds and stuff will be far more in line with the finished product and how it will feel like to play. The game actually plays the same as it did last time, but it's a lot more fun thanks to the sounds and rubble everywhere. The difference it makes surprises even me. When people haven't been criticising this game's graphics, they've been saying how I've been held back by the game making software I'm using, as if that's responsible for how unpolished the game looks and feels. And thanks, I guess. But I'll take full responsibility for that as well. I don't think a game coded in C++ will feel any more polished than one made in Fusion 2.5, which is what I'm using. If anything, the same polish would take even longer in a game coded in C++, so it would take even longer to reach a polished stage. But I know what people mean. I've seen it in super basic 3D games made in Unity. The movement and collisions feel airy and fake, compared with, say, Grand Theft Auto V. It's a horrible feeling and a sure sign that the game was released way too early. But I believe the fault lies with the game developers, and I hope to cover the differences that sound and graphical effects can make to even the most basic of game features. Part of me feels that I should have waited even longer before starting the polish. I hope to add new object types and a proper campaign full of levels before attempting this. But at the same time, I've got confidence in how I've approached this project. I used to boot up the game making software with a clear idea of what I wanted to make and how I was going to do it. And with that attitude, I was always disappointed and never finished anything. With Destruction Darius 2, I'm slower. I'm playing it by ear, testing the game, seeing what it needs and adding the fix or feature that would improve it in that way, right now. And it's as though I'm sculpting something based on what feels right, rather than forcing how I want the finished thing to look. With earlier games like Santa's Atlas and Sundown Shambles, I always felt that I was adding new content right up until the deadline, and would then be too scared to play it after it was submitted just in case there was a game-breaking bug in it, which there usually was. But I have no such concern this time. This game's fun. I'm not sure how much further I have to go with it. I might be 10% of the way through, or I could be 80. I don't really care. It's already a success in my opinion. It's fun, and the more I do to it, the more fun it will become. People who playtest it don't just rush through to the end, put down the controller and say, yeah. They'll discover something new with the gameplay and will then voluntarily replay levels they've already played to test these things out. To me, that's huge. 
And not only are they enjoying it, but I'm also liking this approach to game development a lot more than those rushed, ambitious disappointments I used to embark on. With every new game I used to work on, I'd think that I had reached my final form. As though before I wasn't ready, but now I'm suddenly good enough to make my dream game and anything else that I ever wanted to undertake. So it's nice to know that my approach to game development is still maturing with every title. I'm still learning so much about game development and about myself, and at a surprising pace. But I'm still shit at graphics.